Hello and welcome back to the X Files Revisited. We are on to episode three of season six, which is Triangle. You left us on a hook the last time, Brian, with the plot synopsis to this one, so I was quite eager to check this out. Yep, I was, I was, uh, I was eager to check this one back out as well because it's been quite a while since I'd seen it. So uh, we're we're in so first five seasons of X Files. They're they're like I kind of knew them like the back of my hand because. Mm. All, all those five seasons and 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 the movie, um, I've, I've seen multiple times. And yeah, season six, I, I, I have there's certain episodes from this season onwards that I've seen multiple times. Um, but I used to just kind of really dive into my absolute favorites. Um, so I, I, yeah, this is one of the ones that I remember really enjoying really really enjoying so uh, it, it I, I wanted to see if that would hold up coming back to it this time around mm. so yeah do you care to guess well oh, I, love to don't guess, care, I don't care whether you care it, it, it's, it's that part of the show you have to guess where does this sit in the x-files 217 episodes wow. on imdb Okay, so I like trying to assess it because I always try to come in with some strange rationale as to why, or, or I just grab a number. This one feels like it's it's quirky. It brings together all the kind of people that that they love. It just has a really strange, unique idea. I'm going to go high on this one, Brian. Okay, twenty three. <laughs> twenty three. Okay, um, it's thirty one. So you know it's, that wonder. still still puts it in the upper echelons. It's in the top yeah. quarter of episodes. Mm -hmm. um, so well, top fifth really. Uh, if my maths is correct, which it probably isn't, because my maths is pretty crap to be honest. But yeah, uh, top fifth, <laughs> it's looking. It's, uh, yes. So um, yeah, so it's it's clearly highly regarded amongst IMDb X Files watchers. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, let's let's get into it and try and find out why that might be the case now this episode is written and directed by chris carter when i see written and directed by chris carter if it's a mythology episode i'm quite excited if it's not a mythology <laughs> mythology episode then i'm kind of like oh this is where i have to cut carter some slack and say maybe he had a bad day when he did the uh, syzygy or whatever or maybe he's improved mm. his craft since then but i think he's on fire in, in this episode, and okay. I think uh, I think he shows the, the best directing he's ever shown in in this episode, uh, or likely to show. Um, you know, this is one of the one of them uh, things where they go for a lot of single takes, where the camera's mm -hmm. moving all the time, like start start to finish in this episode. Yeah. The camera's moving all the time. It's always handheld. Uh, I can't think of a, a single shot off the top of my head right now that is like static. That's on a tripod. No, there's a, a kind of ferocious pace to it. Mm. It just feels like constantly moving, mm -hmm. but very planned as well. Uh, in, in in the best possible way. Like there's there's certain mm. there's certain things that they do where it's like, oh, that if that actor hadn't hit that mark, it would have cocked up that whole shot that whole setup and they'd have had to go back and do it again um mm -hmm. so it looks like it's all shot on the fly and it's just kind of half ass like you know documentary type style almost but it's not you can tell by positioning of actors cues things like that that no they, they had to be very specific about where they were going to be at very particular you know very specific times and things like that so it's yeah i think carter does an awesome job directing this uh we start off in the Saragossa Sea. There's a shipwreck, uh, the, a, a, a boat called the, the Lady Garland, and we kind of hone in on a body that's floating in the water, and we recognise very quickly that it's Mulder. What's he doing out there? Uh, and and this is like one of the weirdest opening sequences because it is about ninety seconds, and it's just like a slow push. Like, mm. or, uh, a shipwreck, which is yeah. still like a hook, something weird. You obviously see Mulder in the water, but it just feels like a more controlled, quiet, still opening to what mm. becomes a constantly moving episode after this. It was, it was interesting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We get the uh, the intro, and, and rather than getting the truth is out there, we get German words. Oh, did we? 
Oh yeah. man, I must have still been writing my notes on that opening scene. Um, it, it trans- so I, I, had to, I got it, I got it translated. Right. <laughs> I want to see, and it says the truth is out there somewhere. Right. <laughs> so you've got you've got the, the the lady Garland, and then you've got somewhere, and we've got a fantastical alternate universe where everybody's playing different characters and who they were. And yeah. Very clear allusions to Wizard of Oz in this one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Man, I feel what? so stupid now. I didn't pick up on that. The Lady Garland, <laughs> obviously. What a knob. That's so obvious. <laughs> now that you've said it, I just, yeah. I didn't pick up on that while I was watching it. Yeah. Man alive. What a dunk. <laughs> right, so <laughs> Mulder gets pulled out of the water by a British crew. Uh, yeah, they're all speaking in blighty language. Uh, and, and the most like typical sailor speak. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you close yeah. your eyes and imagine, yeah, really, you know, you're Iceberg, waiting for them to right ahead. <laughs> Make them walk the plank. You know, just like, <laughs> <laughs> it's so jarring oh. as well because it's it's so obnoxiously typical British. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're just like wow. <laughs> So uh, they, they give him a bit of a beating, uh, call him a Jerry, they, they, they think he's German, and they take him to but, the captain. Sorry, did, did you not on. think it was funny, though, that they, like, they pull him out of the water, they're like, we found him in the water, and they're like, breathe, and they're, that's you, get some air in, you're fine, and then they start beating him and threaten to murder him. <laughs> <laughs> they almost <laughs> save him, just so they can torture him. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, but, but, but that's what it is, though, isn't it? Because they, they they're they're assuming he's a Jerry, so it's mm-hmm. like, what information can we get from him? So that they're not plucking him out of the water to save his life. They're not pluck. They're not like trying to bring him back round to save his life. They're bringing him back round because this this is intelligence. What mm-hmm. what what intelligence can we glean from this German who's fallen overboard? So they take him to the captain. And Mulder tries to convince the captain that they are caught in the Devil's Triangle, otherwise known as the Bermuda Triangle. Uh, and the captain locks him in the room for his trouble. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's 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 quite playful right off the bat mm-hmm. because I don't know about you, but all the way through this, like first, the whole first ten minutes, really, with with Mulder interacting mm-hmm. with this crew even when he's interacting with the the germans with the nazis he's like a kid in a candy store <laughs> it's like... he's, he's loving it <laughs> yeah it's, i think like, it's, as soon as he's locked in the room there's a big smile on his face you're like he's, yeah, he's yeah. The, yes it's like man I'm, I'm seriously on the queen queen is it the Anne queen Anne or something like that queen Anne, yeah. um and it's just he can't believe it but i think in mm-hmm. his mind He's got this kind of notion that I oh, can just he can jump off at any point and get back home, and it's mm. only when he um, or, or that or that they're isolated to the point mm-hmm. of like obviously the war's no longer going on, so mm. they're they're just they're on the ship and all he's got to do is well, convince he, them. He kind of assumes that the ship is in his time, not that he's in their time. Yes, yes, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so there's a there's a certain kind of level of safety, or yeah, feeling of safety that comes with that. But mm. the moment he kind of tunes in the radio, and like even the radio broadcast that is coming through, it's from back then. He's suddenly like, oh, because <laughs> it's yeah. like they've not come to my time. I've gone to their time. Yeah, uh, I'm in deep doo-doo. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. so yeah he tries the radio uh here's the sounds of the 30s and then the some nazis enter a, a nazi a nazi enters and mm-hmm. Mulder punches him out uh which seems very uncharacteristic uh you expect Mulder to get owned but then we see that the 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 nazi that he's punched out is none other than spender <laughs> <laughs> so we kind of get what we wanted in last week's episode mm-hmm. where where Mulder punches out Spender. But it's it's not quite as satisfying as you'd like because it's all done in the dark and we don't know that it's Spender is punched yes. out until after the fact. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like, oh, 
I'm glad he's punched him out, but I, I would have liked to have been able to see that moment a bit better, to be honest. But it's a really well shot I, sequence as well because they really push the tension on that moment with the door opening and the shadows and light and mm-hmm. you know Mulder's hiding. So it's really like it's it's, it's well done. Yeah, you know, I would I wouldn't have been surprised if it was Mulder that ended up on the floor knocked out. I was kind of like, <laughs> <half expecting that. laughs> yeah, there's, there's, uh, like this. <laughs> The, the, uh, so we've got two people now that we know Mulder can beat in a fight, and that's Krychek and Spender. <laughs> Spender. <laughs> so basically, if, if we have a character that is like the evil mirror image of Mulder, then he can usually yeah. take them out. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, they're, they're the two guys that we know Mulder can take in a fight. It, it's quite dark. You can't really see a lot of what's going on, and that can be said of a lot of this episode. Yeah. But I think... It works in the episode's favour. One because it allows them to hide those cuts, um, mm-hmm. so they you know they, they they make everything look like it's in a single take. So that that allows them to get from one point of the ship to another point of the ship without actually having to go through the whole ship. Um, yeah. So it's you know it speeds up the narrative, uh, but it also adds to the atmosphere of of just what's you know the, the time that they're now in and 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 just how dark it was back then uh with regards to what was going on around them you know the ship being invaded by nazis the all the countries at war and yes so it's 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 nice i i like the cinematography here it yeah. it works really well for the episode um and and it's it's also a departure from the previous two episodes where we've had this bright yeah. sunshine you know it's like the, when we first came into season six, I was a bit worried about how the tone of the show was really going to change being in LA. That Are they ever mm. going to get back that kind of dark, rainy, gloomy kind of feel that always made the show a bit more spooky? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think this que- this episode kind of answers that. Yes, they're able to do that. Also, I don't know where they're shooting on. Whether they, uh, I'm assuming it's an actual ship and not a set, but either way, production design, on point with this when we get to the ballroom later yeah. and it's just absolutely filled to the brim with everything with 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 production design you know the, the way it's decorated the guests their period costumes it's like if i saw a scene or if we saw a scene like this on a show like say buffy which was a you know a show that was around the similar time it would not look like this um no. you know uh, all due respect to, to Buffy and, and shows like that, it would not look of this quality um, mm. that, that that we see here. Uh, so I, I'm pretty sure it's, it's sets they're using here because they don't you don't get a lot of like external shots on the ship or whatever. So mm. I think just yeah. the sets the sets do look great. It it yeah. looks like we're on a ship. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I have to assume that some of it was shot on a ship, but it, either way. It's it's incredible production design and the use of it is is yeah it's fantastic. Taking Spender's or Nazi Spender's uniform, Mulder is quickly spotted and pursued by Nazi soldiers, which kind of begs the question: What was the point? Yeah. <laughs> it's like he takes this Nazi uniform and like that would have been a good plot device had he been able to use yeah. it for at least five minutes. You know, like mm-hmm. get into another location somehow because he's wearing the Nazi uniform or get out of some trouble because he's wearing the Nazi uniform. But he literally puts goes to all the trouble putting it on, steps out in the corridor and says, hey, you're hold. Yeah, he's literally <laughs> fixing the last button on it as well. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's always good to see things that just don't work as well from a character standpoint, isn't it? Like, you know, like I'm going to yeah. do this, I'll blend in, and then it just doesn't work. It just It's, it's nice. He runs into the dance hall where he finds Scully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they catch up with him, and when the singer kind of just, She's clearly a German singer. Although yeah. there's a moment there where he seems to recognise her. I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I I don't I know if this singer, Yeah, is this supposed to be like an actual historical figure that we are unaware of? Um, because Mulder kind of he comes in. He comes into the the room and he's like, he starts talking, and then he sees the singer and he goes, "Hey," <laughs> and I'm like, "Who is that? Is that?" Um, is that a character from the show? Like because everyone everyone else is playing like different 
Like it wasn't Marita Kubarubi. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Who's that? But, uh, oh, uh, it wasn't. It wasn't. Was it the secretary? It wasn't the secretary, was it? Kirsty's secretary. Oh, I don't know. But uh, she points him out anyway. So she's clearly a, a German spy. And they arrest well, she, him. She has list, she's listed on the credits, but just as the assistant. There's no singer credited. So she, she's listed as the assistant. Yes. Right. I'm going to have to go back and check because I reckon she's Kirsch's assistant. I, either Kirsch's or Skinner's. And w when we get but, to... But everyone else, everyone else who plays two people are credited as two different people. Right. Okay. Okay. It's just a bit bit bizarre that she'd be credited as assistant. I mean, she yeah, assists not as the Nazis, I guess. But yeah, I don't know. It, it, it was just that that look from Mulder threw me off. Yeah, I yeah, yeah no, I, I think the same. Yeah. In fact, so, I, I was thinking Brian will tell me who that is. <laughs> <laughs> nope, <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Okay, so yeah, he, he gets arrested. Uh, well, kind of gets knocked out. Basically, <laughs> they do him over. Well, and start, once more. Yeah, I start dragging him through dark corridors so they can hide those cut shots. Mm -hmm. uh, they drag him outside into the rainy weather, start giving him another beating. Uh, I, I like that he, uh, he, he gives gives as good as he gets. He, you know, he takes one of them down, he, uh, gives him mm -hmm. a, a good kick in. Um, and they take him to the commander, who is two guesses. Who, who's the commander going to be? <laughs> Cancer Man, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so, obviously. yeah, Cancer Man, who has the captain executed in quite um i mean I, th I think these days on tv they would probably show the bullet going in i don't know but back then it was kind of a oh wow i'm surprised they showed that as in the way that they did on tv we see him pointing the gun up to his head and yeah like we, the, the camera pans around so we don't actually see it but we know what's happened and but, uh, but it, it also feels like it's it's not very glamorized and it almost hmm. feels very like impersonal yeah, like, it doesn't feel like it feels like it's a nothing task. Mm. It's just another day, you know. You know, like I need to like check my mail. I need to like sort yeah. this meeting. I need to kill this guy. Yeah. I need to get on. Like it just feels like perfunctory, mm. like a zone which of think, interest think, kind of deal. Yeah, which I think feels much. It's much more shocking when you see that kind yeah. of regard disregard for human life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because because the focus isn't on the person being killed. The focus is on the one doing the killing. So, uh, so there's some Nazi speak that we don't quite understand. Then Canterman is about to shoot Mulder or have Mulder shot when Nazi Skinner enters and stops him before Mulder gets dragged off once more. Mm. Um, so we don't know what he said, but clearly he's, he's saved his life. Um <laughs> Help me, Skinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's from here that we go to back to the modern day, uh, yeah. and we we come to Scully. In in what is <clears throat> so, so the opening sequence with Mulder was quite protracted, was quite long. Now we go to yeah. Scully, and we're going to get another really long, quite protracted sequence. And I've got to say, this whole sequence. From the moment the long gunmen come in and inform Scully what's going down, right through to Scully getting in the van with the information, is one of the best sequences of the entire show. Uh, not no, not genius. just not this, yeah, not just this episode, but the entire show. Um, the tension that's built up, mm -hmm. the the pacing of it. The, the amount the of characters, the, the comic yeah. timing, the amount of characters that all have a different agenda going on, the amount of yeah. um, things that are uncovered that, that kind of show where allegiances lie or may lie. And it's just mm -hmm. there's so much going on, which on the face of it is just there for comic value. But it's it's just so well handled, so well done. And again, <clears throat> the way the way it's directed by Carter is props to Carter for this. Um, it's, it's phenomenal work. So the lone gunmen come in uh, to the to the FBI building, basically. We just walk in. Yeah. 
<laughs> I think he's there in the basement, aren't they? Um, so, <laughs> well, usually, anyway. So, yeah. lone gunman informs Scully of Mulder going hunting uh, for the Queen Anne uh, because it's been spotted via some like satellite kind of doodars. Uh, Scully asks what they need um, because because Mulder's gone missing, so they're like, "We need to get him." Uh, and they say something that I can't say some kind of imaging system basically yeah. they come out with some really long gibberish title how scully is expected to remember all that and jot it down i don't know but she does um scully goes to skinner so she goes straight from there to see skinner uh to, to ask for his help uh and like i say it's all it's all one take so much like so Mulder. Mulder. yeah so much like Mulder. yes She's like, Can you me skinner <laughs> <laughs> in her own way yeah, Skin, Skin is kind of the true true hero of this episode uh, in his own way. But it, again, it's all like one take. We see a weaving through the building. We see kind of cuts where it's filmed in such a way. Like, like there's a bit where she steps on someone's toe in the yeah. lift. And it's like, oh, it's a nice little moment to throw in. And it is. I like moments like that. But it also hides the fact that they've just cut. It hides the mm -hmm. fact that. When we swing around, oh, we can now cut to a different location. So, uh, yeah, uh, Scully goes to Skinner and says, I need you to get me this thing in my bing, me, Bob. Uh, and she says, he says, no. See, this, this is why I was thinking it was the assistant, because she goes past, doesn't she? The, she, goes, she? She tries to get in to see Skinner, and her assistant says, no, he, he's not seeing anyone. Well, right I, I thought you meant it was Kershaw's assistant. Oh, yeah, I'd said Kirsch before, then I meant Skinner, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah uh, no, Skinner's assistant. Because, um, yes, yeah, Scully goes in and the, 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 the assistant, Skinner's assistant's like, no, no, he's not seeing anyone right. But she's just like, she walks in anyway and says, yeah, tough. Um, so that's why I'm thinking it's the same, the same character. Uh, but, yeah, so... Skinner says no, basically. He says, look, I, they could have my ass for this. If they find out I've helped you, when you're not even supposed to be anywhere near me, quite frankly. I'm no longer your superior, superior officer. I mean, I am your superior, but I'm no longer your managing officer. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Sc Scully doesn't take no for an answer, but Oof, at no. this point, it's 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 still the only one he's prepared to give. <laughs> yeah, she, she does she, get quite, she gives, like, bossy like, and in the face mm. and... and assertive which I, I love when she's yeah. kind of that way yeah um, yeah but I, I do love when skinner turned around and he's as he says um use your head it will save your ass yeah you know, like, <laughs> i like yeah, that well, line i don't know why but I, th I think it can be taken two ways which is that um the way she initially sees it which is look we've we've got to look out for ourselves and that's what i'm doing so sorry no, no i don't take but it as also, that at all no I, I don't take it as that at all i i take it as him saying look at what's happening right now my assistant may not necessarily be my assistant uh she knows you've come in here if you don't get your ass out of it now it puts puts us both in in a, you know use your head come to me when i am when I'm or not got people around me, and then I might be able to help. That's that's what I think is really saying mm. there. But she takes it the wrong way for obvious reasons. But um, so she steams off down the corridor, enters a full lift, gets out, goes to see Kirsch. So then again, brilliant because because they've only got one set, and they make this look like yeah. she's gone in the lift, gone down the lift or up the lift, whichever way. Um, and when she gets out. What they're, what they're really doing is they're using the exact same set, mm -hmm. but they've changed a few details very quickly. So as she's walked down that corridor, the crew behind them must be doing all, you know, like speeding around, change this, change that, change that, just a few little details, get the assistant out, swap it for someone else. She goes in the lift, does her little thing, and then when they come out, she's really getting right into the same set and then straight to the same office, <laughs> only now it's Kirsty's office, um, mm -hmm. which, you know, it's feasible because when you make a, a building like that, every floor is basically the same. So, but yeah, she gets out and goes to see Kirsch. She just blunders straight in there. Why she thought she was going to get anything from Kirsch, I don't know. Uh, but she just blunders in, starts kind of saying she needs his help, and and she just gets, she can't he he can't ask her what it's about. He's he's just got to trust her, and it's like 
Scully, I think you're placing a bit too much trust in Kirsch at this point. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. She suddenly realizes very quickly that who else is in the room? None other than Cancer Man. It's like, yeah. hey. all right. <laughs> Cancer Man says nothing. It's just, <laughs> I love how the amount of uh, interactions and, and, and dealings that they've had with Cancer Man, and yet they can mm -hmm. be in the same room as each other and say nothing like yeah she doesn't look at him and, and go, oh yeah bloody typical i thought you might have been involved but, yeah. just... but then she, she kind of does that with a look she looks at him she's like oh. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like yeah it's, it's me <laughs> <laughs> so she steams back out uh mm. straight back to the lift tries to call Mulder, we think. Uh, we, well, she, I think she gets a call and like she, she can't quite hear who it is. It's all Mulder. Yeah. She, she's like, Mulder, Mulder, is that you, Mulder? Um, the doors to the lift open and uh, she she goes down to see Spender to, to get info yeah. or else. <laughs> My <Yeah>. favorite Steve. <laughs> but she just like almost leathers him straight away with this like attitude. <laughs> just like. <laughs> It's so just like like a little boy in trouble. It's hilarious. Yeah. She's proper yeah. on a mission. She is just like, she ain't taking any prisoners. She just goes down there yeah. and she's like, listen, I'm going to beat your little ass if you don't do what I say. Now get me this and don't ask any questions. And he's like, all right. And you know exactly where he's going to. He's a way to see dad. Isn't he? <laughs> daddy, daddy. <laughs> Oh man, look what I got. Look what I got. <laughs> so uh, Spender leaves and the phone rings and Cancer Man for Fowley. She, so she picks it up and it's Cancer Man. He's like, Fowley. So, you know, so, so she starts to pretend to be Fowley. Um, and then he quickly cottons on that it's not Fowley. He's like, Who is yeah. this? So she just puts the phone down, does a runner. And she's stopped by the secretary who tells her that Spender is with Kirsch. And she's like, that rat bastard. Yeah. <laughs> so she, again, she's good enough. But again, like the, the, just the details there that are like, if you don't literally question, well, what, what's, what's just happened there? You don't get the... The, the the subtext the subtext being that well hang on if she's come down to tell scully this information she's um skinner's assistant therefore she's informing scully of some information that yeah th they that if they were on the wrong side of things they wouldn't want to give her so mm -hmm. skinner is in her corner and he's using her yeah. assistant his assistant to, to, to relay information, which also shows that the assistant is in the corner. So, uh, it, yeah, it's just a nice little throwaway thing that it's like she, again, she she, she gets back in the lift. So, someone calls her once more and she's like, Mulder, Mulder. The lift opens and who do we see? <laughs> Cancer Man, Spender and Kirsch all together, yeah. the three stooges. And you're just like, oh, man, this couldn't be any worse. So she hmm. gets back in the lift, really like, uh, da -da 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 -da. oops. It opens again to Skinner, who gets in, gives her the info, and receives a kiss for his trouble. Indeed. <laughs> for his efforts, really. Um, yeah, really. You can see she's just running on adrenaline. She's just yeah. like... <laughs> And I feel like we are as well because of the way this has yeah. all been shot and the way it's played out. It's just like constantly ramping up the, oh man, who's who's going to catch her out? Who's going to stop her? Who, how's she going to get this info when no one seems to be willing to help? And then again, yeah. like I say, Skinner to the rescue. And she she just, in a pure moment of joy, just gives, a, gives him a kiss. Um, it's literally nothing sexual about it at all. It's just no. all them joy. Oh, <gasps> Because yeah. there's a lot of, a lot of kind of fans that have they've always been like, sh you know, sh Skinner and Scully shippers who've, who've always thought, oh, is there, is there something between S Skinner and Scully? And I'm like, no, no, there isn't. <laughs> <laughs> and this certainly isn't proof of that. Um, so, yeah. 
the lift opens uh, to Spender and Canterman and Kirsch again. And Skinner kind of steps out and then he turns out and goes, and if you ever ask me to break protocol again. <laughs> and then uh, also does a little bit of a sidestep that blocks Spender from getting in the lift to stop Scully. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is really nice. Uh, so Skiller, uh, Scully gets down to the basement, hops into the van with the lone gunman. We see Spender kind of running out at the back, chasing after him, but he's got no chance. And, and they ask her, did you get it? And she's like, ah, yes. And you just see the absolute joy on her face, the satisfaction mm-hmm. of having won it. So, yeah. But that's that's the whole scene. Um, and, and it is one scene uh, that yeah. lasts quite a while. It's really well played. Obviously, there's there's multiple takes, but it's all shot as if it is one take. And it, it's, yeah, I think it's one of the best sequences ever on the show. It is, it's, it's great and it, it, I like how it almost, almost in certain circumstances m- mirrors uh, Mulder's thing from the, the start, you know, being mm. stuck in a situation with people who are your friends, people who are your enemies, mm. in a subdiffuse that's going on, the panic running from sequence to sequence, although Scully's is way more controlled than the headless chicken of Mulder <laughs> in the first part. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's a comedic timing as well. It's the way she kind of... Because we don't see this much from uh, Scully at all, where she overreacts a lot, and this, mm. as the sequence goes on, yeah. she becomes more uh, comedic. You know, where she's like seeing people and doing like, like strange yeah. throw up of the hands yeah. or a, 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 an enlarged facial expression of some sort to show how shocked she is. But I think she pulls it off yeah. really well, and yet it yeah. doesn't well, feel out of character, though. That's the thing. No, um, no, and because yeah. you're with her for this long sequence, and you mm. see the tension building all the way yeah. through, and the panic and the urgency, it, I think it pays off really well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Mulder, we go back to Mulder now. He gives a short history lesson to one of the Brit prisoners about uh, basically the, the war and everything. Says the UK doesn't have much to apologise for, except maybe the Spice Girls. <laughs> <laughs> which uh <laughs> yeah back when this came out that line hit me like a i was just like i was in stitches when i first heard that way back when um yeah he so he's locked in with the british crew and he finds out that the nazis are looking for something called thor's hammer Mulder tells them that it's the code name for the man who builds the atomic bomb essentially mm. Uh, then the crew, re- so, so is this, so are we to assume this is Oppenheimer? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There we go. So Mulder tells them, yeah, that, and, and, and then the crew member that he is speaking to reveals himself to be a spy. Um, it's like, trust no one. And so, so we, yeah, we get, um, <laughs> it's Jamaican guy shouting at him, going, "Don't you ever know? Trust no one." <laughs> I, I, I love, I love the guy's performance as they kind of walk. They get locked in there, and as soon as he tells the information, he like walks up to a wall with nothing, shouts <laughs> information into it, and he's just like, "Ha ha, ha German!" <laughs> <Don't leave laughs> the Exit stage left. It was yeah, such yeah, a like yeah. over the top fun <laughs> performance. Oh man! The crew get into an argument as to which way to steer the ship. The British crew members they obviously want to go back to the UK. The Jamaican yep. crew members, who are clearly the bottom deckers, they're the ones doing all the grunt work, you know, keeping the fires burning and all that. They want to go back to Jamaica. Uh, we we see this in <laughs> the Jamaican crew member. <laughs> Which was totally left field, Th- threw me, completely threw me for a Kirsch, Jamaican yep. Kirsch. It's like, <laughs> it's like, what on earth? It's like Jamaican Kirsch, what's he doing? He wants to get back home. So, yeah, I just, that was just hilarious. Seeing Kirsch, it it's was. like proper straight laced, suited douchebag with a stick up his ass, suddenly being all Jamaican and like fighting for the, essentially slave rights to get back home it's just oh man awesome awesome stuff (laughs) so Mulder says that no they can't go to either one of those locations they need to go back 
into the triangle because yeah if if they don't then the the Thor's hammer guy will not get to where he's meant to get to so yeah. the nazis arrive and once again take Mulder away uh now what i don't get is uh so the the jamaican kirsch he's locked himself to something he, he's so locked that... the, the 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 direction of the ship it's almost like a, a secondary steering implement so he's locked yeah so it... oh. yeah so Shoot so my things. my question is why why are the nazi guys allowing that <laughs> like <laughs> Well, like they must be kind of, they must know by now that the ship isn't heading where they want it to be heading. It ain't heading to Germany, that's for sure. If it's, yes, you know, so surely they they would have gone down there to to find you know down to the the engine room to find out what's going on, who's 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 at play here. So why why are they just yeah? Well, grab Mulder, let's go. Uh, yeah, forget the Jamaican who's chained himself to the uh, the steering yeah. apparatus, uh, as if as if they couldn't get through a chain. You know, it's just like shoot the guy and then <laughs> break the chain. Yeah. To, 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 well, to I mean, I, I don't know if there's any tools lying about an engineering section of a ship, but I'm sure they could find something to cut that chain. Well, I'm sure, you know, it, it. I know, I know, it probably doesn't work in real life, but in movies and TV shows, one blast from a bullet shot usually does the trick. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but there's actually an engineering section which is surrounded by all these heavy tools. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, your sarcasm just totally went over me. But yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Mulder tries to fight in a very feeble manner. It must be said, he's taken before. I'd Nat call that. I, I would call that the Mulder manner. <laughs> the Mulder. <laughs> it's there's always the feeble. Mulder we know. Yeah, he's not <laughs> fighting Spender. He's not fighting Krychek. So he's suddenly gone back into feeble mode. So he's taken before Nazi Spender and Cancer Man. Uh, they. I'm not going to call him Nazi Cancer Man because both he and normal Cancer Man are pretty much Nazis anyway. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they question him about the bomb maker. They shoot a passenger with a misplaced gunshot sound. My my one fault about the the episode is the placing oh, of that I... gunshot. Oh, right, okay. No. I've got something so, else. No, so so we see, so we we do the thing again where, you know, the the Nazi holds up the gun to someone. We pan away from that someone to see the Nazi's perspective, and then we hear the shot go and then literally about a second later the guy goes <laughs> I was like, come on, guys, you made the actor look like a right tit there. Because that's not yeah. the actor's fault. That's whoever's nope. put the sound effect on in it in the editing process. That's their fault. So that poor actor has done a nice little ooh, and you didn't get it right. So now he just looks like an idiot who's kind of got his timings wrong. But yeah. I will say that Spender, uh, mm -hmm. and particularly his German accent is absolutely atrocious. <laughs> I actually feel like almost anybody can do a German accent, but he proves how difficult it really is. Like his is awful. Oh man, yeah. They shoot a passenger, and they threaten to keep shooting passengers until he points out who the scientist is. Scully tries to intervene, but gets a gun pointed at her for her troubles. So Mulder points out. The scientist, um, yeah, uh, basically points to the dead guy that just got shot. Modern Scully and the lone gunmen are on a boat outside the Queen Anne looking at the ship yeah. in disbelief. Now, come on, Scully, come on. <laughs> I feel like she undersells this. <laughs> I was like, this is a ship that's been missing for what 60 years. She's trying to rationalise. She's trying to mm. figure out the scientific reason as to why this doesn't actually exist. Yeah. <laughs> That's what she's doing. It's a, it's a pretty decent explanation, to be honest. It's the only explanation. Because it's mm. just like, this, this is this is undeniable. Like, whatever, whatever crap Mulder spouts off at the end, where they think he was just dreaming or on drugs or whatever, you have seen with your own eyes the Queen Anne. So at the very least... You've got to admit something damn funky is going on. 
especially considering the, the ship is still functioning completely with electricity and everything. That is, if you're assuming this happened. Uh, no, it has to. It has to. No. Because why, they wouldn't have found him otherwise. They knew he was out there. Someone could have found him. It doesn't necessarily mean that it was Scully or the lone gunman or if they were even involved. It doesn't do it. Mm, I don't know. Narratively, that is a bit tricky for me because... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Because they're, they're roaming around the ship in, in their time looking for him and, and it's just... I don't know. Why, why would, is, Mul- is that, why would Mul- is that his... That's his memory because he's, he's on a sick bed. He could be dreaming all this. He could be imagining all this has happened. He went yeah. searching for a mythical ship. He had traumatic. Was in the water. Almost yeah, but he, died. He, he, had but he never addresses. Thing. But he never addresses the fact that he only he only talks to them about all the crazy ass stuff with the Nazis and things that he saw. Like, yeah. I'd, I'd, why why would it be in his head that she's there and she's also there doing? Yeah, no, it does. That doesn't wash for me. I, I see it as that's that's Scully and the Lone Gunman. They've used that information to get there. They've found the ship. But when they go on it, they don't see any of the stuff that Mulder sees um, because they're, they're existing in different time frames. So either way you cut it, the Queen Anne has come back through that rift. And that should be enough, damn it, for people to at least raise a flipping eyebrow. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Uh, the real scientist steps forward to stop any more loss of life. And Mulder and past Scully, who is revealed to be an OSS agent, are taken before a possible firing squad. Um, what's OSS again? Whose side is that? Is that is that American or Russian? Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. So excuse our ignorance anyone who's got this far, but <laughs> neither one of us know what the OSS is. It, obviously, it's some kind of intelligence agency, but um, yeah. So they're, they're kind of dropped before a firing squad, uh, but before any triggers can be pulled, the ship's engines shut down and the brick crew storm the room and it just turns into a massive ballroom fight. <laughs> Yeah, a, a, a yeah. brawl room fight. It's a brawl. It's a typical thing you would yeah. expect. Yeah. Yeah, when you think of a brawl. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. Uh, so, and, and again, just really well directed because there's a lot of extras there. They've all got to be fighting each other. They've all got to look like they're connecting. A lot of times, and, and particularly on TV, in TV shows, when you get a scene like this where you have a bar brawl and there's loads of extras and they're all fighting at once, we, we, we often see that, Punches are not connecting. Kicks are not hitting yeah. the marks because it's like <coughs> they're all extras and they're just like, yeah, I can't really hit this guy properly, and it, the camera's not going to see me anyway. And, and yeah, they see you, and it looks horrible. Here, you don't get that. It's all really well staged. Everyone looks like they're hitting each other. The camera's weaving in and out of them. It's all really well mm-hmm. choreographed, down to a fine art. So yeah, fantastic stuff yet again. So. Meanwhile, Modern Scully searches the desolate ship with the lone gunmen. Um, Mulder and past Scully crawl out of the fight. They are saved by spy Nazi Skinner, who shoots one of his Nazi friends when you know to to save them, uh, tells them to get going. So past Scully and Modern Scully pass each other in the corridor with a really inventive swipe screen. It's I love it. I love this moment. Yeah. So past Scully goes down um, that corridor, then mm-hmm. modern Scully comes down another corridor, and then past Scully comes back up, and they both pass each other. And they're like, oh. It's like they've literally just walked walked, walked over the, each other's grave or something. Like, ah, oh, what, what was that? And then they kind of ignore it, and then off they go. Um, and then Modern Scully comes back up with the lone gunmen because they're trying to get out of their way. 
and there's this kind of swipe screen. That it's just, it's all really well done. Like in my head, yeah. I can't, I can't quite articulate what happened, and that's because it's actually quite a complex thing. And to to match yeah. up those two separate shots and then blend them together, and then kind of get rid of one so that they're no longer yeah. exist in the same. And time. I love, I love the split screen. The whole idea of that as well It's just terrific. Mm. It looks amazing. Yeah, you know. And it's used to really good effect because of these narrow hallways that they're in as well. Like you can mm. easily put it side by side, and yeah, it, it's really well done. Yeah, phenomenal stuff. So <clears throat> back to the ballroom fight or not? Because uh, yeah, we go to the ballroom with Modern Scully, and it's just desolate again. It's just a <clears> dusty <throat> old ballroom that hasn't been lived in for well sixty years. So. Mulder tells yeah. Scully that she's got to convince the passengers to turn the ship around. So this is past Scully. Um, mm -hmm. And we get a moment where Mulder's like, in case I never see you again, and he kisses her. And she punches him. <laughs> now, I played this back several times because it really yeah. looks like she connects. <laughs> It really looks like she lands that punch. Um, like, I don't know about you, but that punch looked like it hurt. I'm going to pick up the, the clip of it and I'm going to post it as a shot on our uh, on our channel because it's, it's, yeah, it's just awesome, awesome stuff. I feel like this, this episode is where Mulder starts to maybe recognize that he does have feelings for Scully. Um, and I know that rubs you the wrong way a bit. Um, it kind of rubs me the wrong way a little bit. Um, but I think it's handled really well in this episode. Um, so yeah, I just, I just the kiss followed by the punch kind of shows you that okay, we, we're seeing where Mulder might be at. And it's like, oh, okay, yeah, that's where Skull is at. <laughs> this ain't going nowhere, yeah. <laughs> Mulder is fished out of the sea, and I, I'm not entirely sure by who. And this is my whole point. So, mm. from the moment at the start, where he's at a shipwreck, mm -hmm. yeah, to the end of the episode, where he's at a shipwreck, mm -hmm. is all make-believe. Everything that happens in there is inside Mulder's brain. There's a bit mm. at the bed seat in the hospital after this where he's like, you were there, but you weren't there and you were on the ship. And she's like, no, Mulder, that was a ghost ship. Like she doesn't even allude to the fact that. Uh, she was on see, it. But she's, yeah, but she says that was a ghost ship. So that does allude to the fact that she was on it. No, um, ghost ship as in a ship that's seen but doesn't actually exist. It's not there. Like it's just it's just a, a figment, a fragment, a nothing. Well, no, because because the, the term ghost ship refers to ships that are found with no crew on them. That's why the Mary Celeste is called a ghost ship, because she rocked up without her crew. It's like, okay, where did they go? Um, so that's that's I mean, that's the whole point of the term, isn't it? You, the, a ship exists, but there's no course. one on it. But I, so, I take it, I yeah, think so, it's everything from that that start till he is back in the water is just complete mm. fabrication. I, I think the fact that we're having this conversation shows that the episode is set up to allow the viewer to go either way. I think we sit on mm. different sides of the fence there, but I don't think either one of us is wrong. So we're at the hospital and Mulder's like, what happened to me? And Scully says, you did something incredibly stupid. <laughs> <laughs> she emphasizes that line, which I just thought was awesome. Skinner threatens to kick Mulder's butt. The lone gunman asks what drugs he's on because they want some. And Scully tells him to think, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. And Mulder tells her he loves her. And she's like, oh, brother. <laughs> and she just walks off, leaves him to it. We get a little moment mm. where he's kind of feeling the cheek and it feels like, again, you know, the risk of getting too romantic. It, it has that feeling that Mulder's like, oh, man, I've been struck by Scully. I've been struck in more ways than one. Um, but, yeah. And, again, there's, there's that line there at the end that's 
there's no place like home. There's no place like home, which suggests again with the allusion to the the Lady Garland, that thing that I missed mm-hmm. right at the beginning. How I missed that, no, no clue. Um, <laughs> which does suggest it is all just a Wizard of Oz thing, which means it is all in his head. So yeah, final thoughts. It is. You know, it's, it's, it's a fun episode. It's one of those episodes that's got absolutely pretty much nothing to do with anything. Is it? Mm. Like it's not not even explained. They just it's as if they just want to have fun. Yes. <laughs> and just go like this is what we're going to do. <clears throat> um, and you'll enjoy it one way or another. And mm. I think even though it's kind of tropey and kind of following beats that you would expect, it's still fun. It's got fantastic sequences that are really entertaining that gives us some great suspense and shows a kind of cinematic avenue of the the series again like you know i, I keep going back to that first scully sequence which i think is just immense it's, it's yeah. absolutely perfect in every way um it's, it's just such a fun episode and i watched this ill late at night not feeling great and it was it was kind of like a, a comfort to sit down and watch this one you know it was i didn't have to think too much about it just enjoy mm-hmm. it yeah yeah so yeah really solid episode i think it, I think I'd probably go 4.5 or 5. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I, I'm going to give it a 5. I, I think it's a great episode. Uh, like you said, it's it's <clears throat> it's an episode you can just stick on and have fun. Yeah. Uh, it's It's got great cinematography, some nice burst of action. Uh, it's fun seeing all the characters in different kind of roles. Uh, I, I, I can't remember if... Yeah, I think it, so. I, I think um, so. Buffy came out in '96, didn't it? Buffy, right Buffy was '96, so it was probably into its like third season, I think, when this came mm-hmm. out. Um, and that had done like the the body swap thing. I mean, X Files had done the body swap thing anyway with small potatoes. So, um, kind of anyway, even though it wasn't really a body swap, it was somebody appearing as Mulder. But <clears throat> it it feels like we're at the point now where the popular shows that were around are all starting to influence each other. And I do think that this episode maybe owes a little debt to Buffy, the vampire slayer. I think it has much better production value than anything Buffy ever put out. But I think that that playful nature that um, Buffy always had, and you know the the, the body swap episode. Uh, it did at least one body swap episode that it that it did, or something like that. Anyway, or, or or it was a thing where characters acted differently. I remember Xander kind of going around with a as an army soldier kind of thing, and it's like yeah, all the characters did like body swaps. And I feel like this is almost okay. X Files influenced shows like Buffy, and now shows like Buffy are having an imp- and it, it became mm-hmm. yes, it's when TV was really taking off, and everybody was take bits and bobs from each other but to great effect i would say yeah i think it's a fantastic episode five out of five for me hmm. i absolutely loved it but, and, and you you're still sticking with the it happened say the defense well now that we've had that line yeah now that I've, I've just thought about that line where she says there's no just keep telling yourself Mulder. there's no place like home there's no place like home. that is a definitive allusion to uh yeah wizard of oz right there so yeah, I, I think the, the, suggest... the, i think the biggest thing for me and it is because because it's obviously focused on Mulder and it feels as if it's Mulder's dream of sorts everything is fitted into the way he sees the world you know where yeah. you've got cancer man is the nazi mm. bender spender is his <laughs> lapdog <laughs> like which it really is um skinner is a double agent not sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kersh, Always on the fence. Kersh, and... <clears throat> yeah, Kersh could be a friend or an enemy. He's not sure either. He's just wanted to direct mm. the ship in a certain way. Those things, the way yeah. things are supposed to be done, but not. Yeah, like, it, like that wouldn't really happen at the time. And obviously, the 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 ultimate consistent ally in Scully. Yeah, you know, it just kind of leans towards like more his mindset rather than yeah, like a real adventure. But yeah. yeah, great episode. So, Brian, tell me a little bit about Dreamland. Uh, so, <clears throat> this is a two-parter. Yeah. 
No, 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 no. It's it's not a mythology one. <laughs> no, this I is... just I just hate two parters because it's like <laughs> I need to wait. I mean, what we record the first part and then I have to wait to watch mm -hmm. the second part. Yeah. So th this is a bit of a difference with this two parter. So you know how we had like um, Tempest Fugit and Max that kind of felt like. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like other two parters because it felt somewhat removed from the mythology. Like you could check it out and you wouldn't notice it had gone, other than Spender mm -hmm. being taken out of the picture. Uh, not Spender. <laughs> What's his name? Uh, Pendrel. Other than Pendrel being taken mm -hmm. out of the picture, there's nothing in that two parter that was like had to be there, so to speak. But it felt yeah. like a a movie. It felt like oh, uh -huh. this, this, you know, if you. You put this on the big screen, edited together as one, it, that, that'd be like a proper X-Files movie. Well, this is kind of the same. So Dreamland, parts one and two, is kind of like its own little mini X-Files movie, uh, but it's a comedy episode. So yeah. it's, it, okay. it's... And again, going back to the whole body swap thing, it's a body swap episode. So <clears throat> Mulder swaps bodies yeah. for the government Friday. agent. Freaky Friday kind of deal, yeah. Um, and it's a two-parter. So, And it stars, okay. it guest stars Michael McKean from Spinal Tap. <laughs> right, okay, yeah. So it, it's, yeah, it, I, I, it, it's, it's a good one, if my mm. memory serves me correct. I, I, I remember having a lot of fun with it. So, But I, okay. I, I'll be interested to see where you land. Yeah, so will I. We'll see. <laughs> As always, <clears throat> thanks for joining us on the X-Files Revisited. Remember to give us a review or a like on whichever podcast service you listen to us from or on YouTube itself. We appreciate all the ratings you're willing to give us because it helps other people discover our podcast. And we will see you next week for Dreamland. <laughs>